How are you guys? Hello, sir. Doing so great. after all these weeks and all this time speculating, they used the exclusive franchise tag on Kirk Cousins. How surprised were you? Well, I was surprised by the exclusive designation um, because the non-exclusive would give Kirk the ability to negotiate with other teams, which may make it easier to trade him. Now, this puts the control back with Washington to a degree. Doesn't mean he can't be traded. Doesn't mean he won't be traded. But it means that it, 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 it'll, like, it'll be the Redskins seeking that out and not Cousins. So I was surprised by that aspect. I actually thought that this mitigated, this reduced the chances of them trading him. Because if you wanted to really trade him and you ultimately don't want to pay what it's going to cost you to have a, you know, a quarterback that's up for free agency in this market right now, I would think you'd want to cast as many lines out there. You'd tell the agent, go ahead, get the best deal you can. Uh, you know, that'd be great for us. You know, go get us two number ones and, and go sign a great deal. Uh, I think the fact that they said, hey, you know what, we're going to handle this from here. Don't worry. I think it also shows Kirk, you know, he's, he's wanted to be wanted. Well, there's no other way to be wanted than to be their exclusive franchise guy. To me, it just signaled as a Redskins fan, this was a good day if you, want it, if you think and you want Kirk here long term. Yeah, and I'm not sure I'm going to go that far, only because if they really wanted him here long term, I think they would have made an offer that would come close to tempting him to sign. And I think the problem is that even though you know Cousins can say, yeah, this shows they want me, he knows in the back of his mind that they haven't made an offer. They still have really to show him. They still have to show him, yeah, no doubt. Still, I still, and and I, think that's, I think that becomes a problem after two years of this. And this, Listen, it's okay if they don't. I'm not saying they have to. But just from his perspective, he knows that um, he knows what they think. He knows they feel like he's good but not great, and they have a hard time paying him at that price because, again, they haven't come. It's not even about him making these you know outrageous demands or whatever. They haven't even tempted him with an offer, whether last year or, or this offseason so far. And I think that, to me, so we really don't know truly what he would sign for because they haven't come close. So I think that, to me, is still the message that is out there for him, and he knows that. But, yeah, you know, does it I, – I think – listen, I think a trade is something they'll definitely still explore because they know if they don't, and they know, they know what the cost it will be to sign him. They know that the chances that, of doing that are, are unlikely unless they change their thinking, and therefore they're staring at losing him for a third-round comp pick in 2019 – which they're not going to do. Year, so. They're not going to do that. Right. Correct. And so, so that's why I think the trade's on the table. Now, the hard part with the trade always remains a couple things. One, you know, San Francisco, which is the place where, listen, I was told that's his preferred destination. It's where he'd sign a long-term deal right now. doesn't mean he would with somebody else. Um, but it just means that, you know, he has a familiarity because of Kyle Shanahan. John Lynch really likes him. So I think that makes a lot of sense. But if you're the Niners you know that this guy wants to play for you. He will do, he'll come out next year, and you can get him for just the cost of a contract, not trade. I think that makes it tough. I think you know, then if you're like Cleveland or Chicago and you want to get involved in this, what are you really willing to give up to get him? And you know, um, if I'm them and I don't have a strong familiarity with having worked with him and what he's all about, would you really give up a couple picks plus pay him 20 some million. I have a feeling his price tag for those teams would be higher than maybe with somebody else um, just for that reason. And would they really want to do that? So I think those are reasons why a trade still will always be difficult, um, you know, to, to make, whether it's exclusive or non-exclusive. Is it, is it easier for the team to just deal with other teams and negotiate with other teams and rather than let the agent and the player do it? Would they, would they, <laughs> well, would they want that control? Yeah, well, I think they do because that's what I think. That's partly why they have this exclusive designation. So, yeah, I think it, it could be you know finding the deal that they want to get, and if it's good, then then it, you turn it over to Cousins and his agent and say, okay, this is who we're going to trade to. Now, if I would, let's say again, let's say you're Cleveland, mm -hmm. and you say, okay, we'll give you this, and the, and the Redskins agree to that then you have to turn it over to Cousins and his agent. Right. And so the Redskins would have to give him permission. If they don't and you're the Browns, you're taking a big gamble. And in that situation, the price, the, the price to get him has to go down because 
why would you do that unless you have a long-term deal that you know you'll get a long-term deal the minute the trade is announced? So, but yeah, it does certainly give the Redskins the, the control in this situation. But I think ultimately people know that what they feel about him, people know that it's going to be hard for them to sign him long-term and therefore they're staring at losing him after next off season um, for, and again, unless they franchise him a third year, which is at 34 and a half. If you do that, why the heck wouldn't you have signed him to a big deal last year, you know, and, you know, or they transition. I, I would tell that's unlikely. That's still 28 million. And, you know, again, you look at the guaranteed money then over three years, it's like, why didn't you get a deal done? So, you know, so they, the, everybody else knows all this. So it's, while the Redskins have the control of the negotiating rights right now, I think, you know, it's, it's still hard for them to have full leverage because they're kind of in a tough situation with this. 